Today we're going to talk about the dark and haunting past of Central State Hospital in Milledgeville, Georgia. And we're going to do it right here on Pop Faction. There have been many mental institutions throughout the United States since our nation's inception, but few could rival the sheer size, patient population, or history than that of Central State Hospital in Milledgeville, Georgia. Originally known as Georgia State Lunatic, Idiot, and Epileptic Asylum, it first opened its doors way back in 1842. After a movement from several states to reform prisons, create public schools, and established state-run hospitals for the mentally ill. So in 1837, Georgia legislature passed a bill backed by then-Governor Wilson Lumpkin calling for the creation of a state-run lunatic asylum. Construction began on the massive asylum that would go on to become one of the largest in the world. The asylum started out on the right foot under the leadership of a Dr. Thomas A. Green who instituted the institution as family model for the asylum, in which the hospital resembled an extended family atmosphere. Dr. Green would eat and visit with the patients and staff daily, and he also abolished chain and rope restraints on the patients, which was a common practice at the time. Though his practices were more human than others at this time, thousands of people were still locked up at Central State for conditions that today would not even be classified as mental illness. In pre-Civil War Georgia, the state was finding itself with more and more unwanted, abandoned, and outcast citizens. And where better to send their unwanted citizens and get them out of the way of normal society than the asylum? Dr. Green may have had a more positive atmosphere instituted at the hospital, but this was still an early era in mental health. By the 1950s, the hospital had taken a dark turn for the worst. With out-of-control population growth, At one point, there were only 48 doctors for thousands of patients, and out of those 48 doctors, not a single one was a licensed psychiatrist. It was later uncovered that the hospital administration were hiring doctors right off the psych ward floor. That's right, they were hiring their own mentally ill patients as doctors to care for their mentally ill patients. It is safe to say that by this point in time, the hospital had outgrown its resources with a patient-to-doctor ratio of 1 to 100. Practices at the asylum no longer resembled the extended family atmosphere that Dr. Green had envisioned for his hospital. Now doctors and staff were using more barbaric and harsh practices, such as the infamous lobotomy and electroshock therapy without sedation. Children were locked up in cages and adults forced to take steam baths cold showers, and fine to straight jackets, and the list goes on. Central State had become a scary and foreboding place, a place to be feared. Parents from all around Georgia would threaten their children. If they were not good, they would be loaded up and hauled off to the asylum, because people were going in and never coming out. When the public found out about the ratio of so-called doctors to patients at the hospital, however, the fact that they were hiring actual patients as doctors. This threw citizens into an uproar, and the state was forced to take action after years of doing nothing at all about the situation. Most of the asylum staff were fired and replaced with credible doctors, nurses, and wards, and the hospital finally got much needed funding. During the 1960s, the hospital population grew to a staggering 12,000 patients. Central State had become the largest mental hospital in the world. 200 buildings sat on over 2,000 acres of land. That same decade, however, would see the population dwindle. As the late 60s and early 70s arrived, other regional hospitals began to open. Community mental health programs began to grow, and newly emerging psychotropic drugs were growing ever more popular meaning patients could live in less confined and restricted environments like mental asylums. Due to these circumstances, Georgia Governors Carl Sanders and Jimmy Carter began slowly emptying out Central State Hospital, sending patients back home to be cared for in their own communities, a 
at regional hospitals and community clinics. The hospital would remain open and fully functional for the next few decades, but at far less capacity. With it once having a staggering 12,000 patients, it now averaged around a measly 9,000 from year to year. In 2010, however, the Georgia Department of Behavioral Health and Disabilities Board announced the hospital would be closing. But in years since, it has remained partially open and has become the state's center for justice system referrals and commitments basically meaning that inmates who have been arrested for crimes but have been deemed incompetent to stand trial are now being sent here to receive treatment. Also, as of 2016, the hospital is offering short-term stays and treatment for the mentally ill. With that being said, only a small fraction of the institution is being used today. Out of the 200 buildings once operating on the property, only a few remain in operation today with some of the main, once thriving buildings now falling into abandon and disrepair. The Jones Building, which was built in 1929, was one of the most massive buildings on the property, and today is a shell of its former self. Today, around 2,000 headstone memorials fill a large portion of the property to memorialize the deaths that occurred at the asylum over its ominous past. Though that 2,000 is just a fraction of the dead that remain here. As a matter of fact, in recent years, it's been discovered that over 25,000 bodies are buried in unmarked graves all across the asylum's 2,000 acres. With those kinds of numbers, it's no wonder that stories of hauntings are quite the normal for this hospital. With the many buildings of this once thriving hospital falling into disrepair and becoming ever more haunting and ominous, you would be safe to bet that there are surely a fair share of specters roaming these grounds. From the now dilapidated morgue where bodies of the recently passed were kept, to the once thriving Jones Hall where a large amount of patient lockup rooms were located, Central State has become a truly haunting place. Central State sees more than its fair share of urban explorers every year. So many try sneaking onto the grounds to explore the old broken down halls of this once massive asylum, all no doubt trying to catch a glimpse of the dead or overhear a faint whisper from the other side. Many have reported sightings and hearing these disembodied voices from these long abandoned halls, with the old morgue being one of the hottest spots for paranormal activity. Also, many sightings have occurred on the acres of lawn at the asylum, and who could expect any less? with all those bodies being buried throughout the grounds. As we think about the horrific state of psychiatric medicine at the turn of the century in the United States, we can only imagine the horrific things that people succumb to within the walls of this menacing place. The scary question we must ask ourselves is, with the limited understanding of mental illness in these times, how many of these people who underwent many of these horrific treatments were actually suffering from mental illness at all? As mentioned before, many people who were brought here and locked away for the rest of their natural lives were done so for conditions that today would not even be classified as mental illness. As a matter of fact, a lot of these people would in many circumstances today be labeled as a little more than eccentric. Imagine someone just deciding that you were crazy and calling the powers that be to have you hauled off and locked away for the rest of your days. There are stories of men calling to have their wives hauled away for simply not being obedient to them. Mothers and fathers calling and having their out of control children hauled away. How scary is it to imagine that at one point in time, someone else in your life with the slightest bit of power or position over you could just decide you were crazy, then have you taken away and locked down in this horrific place only to be experimented and operated on to the point that you either ended up dead or docile in a shell of your former self. Lobotomy anyone? This reminds me, has anyone ever seen the movie Shutter Island? I may do an episode on this movie in the future, but it just seems fitting to mention this movie here. The main character of this film, Teddy Latus, is a U.S. Marshal sent to Shutter Island, 
a secluded mental asylum that's located on a small island, to investigate the disappearance of one of the patients at the asylum, only to eventually discover that he himself is a patient at the facility. And this whole scenario of him playing a lawman looking for a missing person has been nothing more than an elaborate exercise he has been allowed to play out by his doctors in an order to try and cure him. But is he truly crazy? Or is this hospital part of a conspiracy to make patients and anyone coming to look for them disappear? This movie goes a lot deeper than just this, and it goes deeper than what we're able to cover here. But the film leaves you with the question, what is crazy? Are you crazy? Or are you just aware of a reality that others around you are not? And if we can still ask these questions today, then imagine a time in history when mental health was even less understood. How many of these innocent people at Central State Hospital met with death in horrible and traumatic ways due to human ignorance, only to be shipped off to the morgue and later taken out to the grounds and thrown in shallow and unmarked graves? Would your soul be able to rest if such were done to you? Well, thanks for sticking with me today, guys, as we cover the dark history of Central State Hospital in Milledgeville, Georgia. I encourage you to look up some things on this hospital for yourself, as the history of this hospital just goes on and on. It was opened in the 1800s, so there's a massive amount of history to this place, far more than we could cover in this little short episode here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and be sure to let me know in the comments section what you think about these kind of videos. Thanks for hanging out right here on Pop Faction. (laughs) 